are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. Beto, what's up, man? How's it going? Dude, thank you for coming out, man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Um, Beto, introduce yourself for people. I, I have a, I have definitely some people in Austin that watch the podcast, but mm-hmm. I think there's some people that uh, would be curious to know, you know, a little bit more about you that are, are living here. And then I wanted to kind of tell some of my friends back home, anyone listening that wants to come here, you know, to try food and stuff, to you know, be introduced introduced to you and kind of hear your story about Quantos. And I want to learn about it because I don't know everything about it. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself to people who don't know who you are. You know. Yeah. So uh, my full name is Luis Alberto Robledo. Alberto is where the Beto comes from. Okay. Um, and I own Quantos Tacos, Quantas Hamburguesas, and you know maybe some other projects later on down the road. But all here in Austin, Texas, on the east side, um, nice. we're located at a food park called Arbor Food Park. Um, on East 12th Street, uh, and yeah, been having that for four years now, and thankfully, yeah. it's dude, it's popping off. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's trying to get some of the Quantos, dude. <laughs> it's always popping over there. Yeah, thankfully, man. It's, yeah, it's uh, was it's that real? Was that kind of like right away, like the success of it, or did did you guys deal with like uh, you know, that lull period of just like brand awareness, trying to get people to figure out where you're at and you know how good the food is, or or was the, was it just kind of like boom immediately mm-hmm. people figured it out and word spread yeah it's a good question to start off with so um uh, i guess i can kind of go back yeah to when i was 20 i was 23 how old are you now uh 33 33 yeah. okay so a lot has happened these last 10 years but i opened up my first food truck with an old business partner of mine um kind of two years after culinary school um and uh that concept was mexican and japanese and we had that running for about three years so one learned everything of how to even start a food truck licensing and all that stuff and how to create a menu and all that stuff but um that closed but i learned with all the bad that came with it i learned and appreciated everything that i learned and one of the things that i didn't want to seem to to realize or understand how hard and difficult it was going to be but that that stigma of like the first year of a startup business it's you're not gonna see any money you're yeah. not gonna see anything at all it's gonna be nothing but pain and struggle and that that was that and that experience um so uh but you rose from the ashes i mean yeah. you you didn't you know a lot of people would just be like oh it didn't work my wife's mad at me yeah uh all this effort for nothing mm-hmm. and then they just kind of like you know go get a job somewhere or or do something like on the safer side you yeah, know what no, i mean and yeah. like for some reason you were like no 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 Mm -hmm. no no we're gonna go back we're gonna we're gonna reset with all the stuff we learned and yeah that's cool man that's cool yeah yeah and that's what i did after that closed um we almost hit our three-year mark with that um when that closed i went back to work at restaurants in town and then also doing some other stuff with um with my mentor and um did that for about i was trying to do that for a year after it closed so that i can save up as much money as i could and make my way over to europe and work in kitchens over there oh damn so you were you went over to europe and worked in kitchens no 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 that's oh, what, I was trying to that's do. what you were trying to do yeah okay, yeah but, but, but halfway into that is when i met um my now ex-wife and um and halfway into that year i met her and then you know we dated and then um got married and had my daughter mm-hmm. and um when my daughter when i knew my daughter was on the way i was like i need to I feel like I need to give this one more try. Yeah, you're like, we can't open. just go party in Europe anymore. Yeah, now. yeah, no, 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 that's not. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't, be, I can't be hanging out in kitchens in Europe mm-hmm. having a blast out here. I got a kid on the way. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. So I'm like, I'm going to give this one more try um, with no loans, no investments, just Damn. work like three different jobs, um, restaurant, Dude. construction, and Ubering. All the way up until I can save up as much as much money as I could um, to be able to get the actual trailer ready for mm-hmm. inspection and to open, and then have like a little extra money for inventory for however many months. Sure. Um, but with the first business, I went to I went into Quantos with the mentality of the first year I'm not going to see anything, but just loss and stress and not sleeping. And that and was from that your previous experience, right? Yeah. 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 So I went in going with that with that mentality, like. I know I'm not going to see anything for a long time. Low expectations? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just f- hyper-focused on making sure that what I was trying to bring to Austin 
would make people feel like they're standing on the sidewalk of like Mexico City and they're hearing cars zooming by, they're smelling the smells of the food, uh, the music that's playing, mm-hmm. the lighting that's playing, and then obviously finally the the taste. Um, so I just zoned in on that and knew I wasn't gonna see anything for quite some time, but but it blew uh, up. Yeah, we opened in September of 2019, and uh, by September tour. By the end, by mid to end November, we started selling out. Um, wow. So that was two and a half months in. And selling out, like nobody sells out at a taco truck. Like. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's a barbecue thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, it's like uh, yeah. selling out at 2, 3 p.m. or something. That's that's crazy. Yeah, no, man. And uh, just just like the support. Um, Cuantos Tacos was like straight up that old school word of mouth. Yeah. yeah, you know, there was social media and Instagram and stuff like that, but yeah, I didn't have money for any marketing. I didn't have no, the there. influencers got a hold of you. Yeah, the influencers yeah, had, well, got a hold of you. Well, it, all, <laughs> it all started with the restaurant industry. Um, a lot of chefs and homies that work in restaurants, because honestly, like, that's really the best way you want to go about spreading news about mm-hmm. your food. Because whenever you're eating at a restaurant and you know you're done with your meal, you're in between meals, or trying to think of eat at something similar, you kind of would think to ask your, a server yeah that absolutely you, like, where, where do you go to eat or right. if you're visiting in town like where would you go and then that 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 was the case oh, um because yeah. back then we used to stay open until like two in the morning oh i was only open at night from five till like two man bring that back <laughs> I let wish. me get that late night i know that I late know. night quantos would be hitting dude <laughs> no but. no we're, we're we're working on possibly getting some carts spread around the city to, be awesome. able to do that but uh but yeah no after 11 it was all industry people. It was yeah. people like uh, uh, bartenders, bartenders, uh, for mean from you know Suerte Este, guys Philip, uh, all the homies from Nixta Di Scala, yeah. um, Philip from Not uh, a Damn Chance, uh, Comedor. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, and then just you know, you know, just restaurant tours mm-hmm. and then just people in the industry. So it was like an industry hang. Yeah, yeah. Like, like they hey, would come over after their time? shift. They would nice. come over, pull, they'll pull up with some beers. and There's, like, no good food around at that at that hour, really. There's, yeah. like, the late-night food scene is sparse. Yeah, yeah. And know? then, you know, um, yeah, I feel like a lot of things have changed. <laughs> Excuse me. For us and the city all together, like, in these last five, you know, five, six oh, years. Oh, for sure. In the last two or three, from what yeah, I hear. I mean, I've, I've, I've only been here for, like – two years almost yeah. and it's changed since i got here mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. mo- it's moving there's no it's not slowing down at all yeah i know and like the amount of like really good food that you know the city has always had but it's becoming more mm-hmm. it's 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 awesome to do because you know we all love to eat oh yeah dude <laughs> and after living here too like i'm so spoiled like the food mm-hmm. here is just on a different level like nationally you know what i mean yeah. like you go around to most of the states and i'm just like dude like I'll just get Chipotle or something, yeah. you know, yeah, like yeah, something yeah. that you know is gonna mm-hmm. be okay. Mm-hmm. Cause like taking the taking the L on a taco truck in uh, in Illinois or something, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. No, you no. end up with like white people taco night tacos, <laughs> you know, like the like the, like the shredded cheese on the hard yeah. shell or something. You're like, no, that's <laughs> not what I wanted. Yeah, there's a time and a place for that. But oh, for if you sure, want, like, a for sure. Taco, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, you get spoiled out here, though. Like the like even even just when I go back home too, there's mm-hmm. like there is good food at, in Portland, but it's just there's something about the t- Texas, like Houston, San mm-hmm. Antonio, and Austin. The cent- we got something going on here. Yeah, in, in central in the central Texas area, man. The food is the food is wild. Yeah, and it's only going to get a lot better. So what what did, what all did you do before you were you know a full time like restaurant truck owner? Do, do truck owners consider themselves restaurant owners or is there like a, you're not a restaurant like dude is there like gatekeeping or something from like restaurant restaurant to food truck owners unless the food truck is like super popular like maybe they treat you like a restaurant mm-hmm. owner but not that i'm aware is there of like a stigma uh, between no, the two or something like that no no not that i've okay. ever come across or that i heard um i can tell you one thing in 2022 I could be um, I could be very wrong about this, but uh, the Austin Culture Map they host awards every year for restaurants from different parts of the city of Texas. Mm-hmm. And in 2022, uh, well, since 2020, we've been nominated for you know best new uh, restaurant and you know all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, in 2022, we won the award for best restaurant. Damn, and we're a food trip. Um, That's awesome. 
um, which is amazing. That's kind of like Leroy Lewis, like winning the barbecue, yeah. like top five barbecue mm -hmm. joints, but they're just a truck. And I think that was the first one in history to be in the top five. Oh, nice. Like of that list. Or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah, Leroy's. Really so good. you're a restaurant now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Whether they like yeah. it or not, dude, I'm yeah. weird. N number one, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so what? All, what all did you do like bef before you you were like, okay, I'm gonna be a restaurant owner one day? Because or was that always a thing that you were like, like you know, did, was there ever like another time when you weren't even thinking about owning a restaurant? Maybe. Yeah. And uh, you were thinking about doing something completely different. Yeah. So I was, uh, as a kid, all the way up until you know I was legally able to work at a place. I would work construction with my dad um, during, you know, the breaks and the summers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, so the work, like, he donned that work ethic on me. Yeah. And I n knew that I always wanted, I had to do something with my hands because I like building stuff or doing things with it. Yeah. Um, and at that same time as I was a kid, uh, during the holidays, my my aunts, but my grandma, Maylee, um, one of my tia Lourdes has passed away, and my mom, Rosa, uh, I would be interested in being in there with them when they would be making tamales or mm -hmm. any other kind of foods. So that's where that, the curiosity. Yeah, came that's where out, that like, yeah. and that's where I started to build my palate. Yeah. Um, How old do you think? Uh, I really started noticing it around 11, 12. Um, that's when I really started to like pay attention because yeah, you know, like I said earlier, like I have like outside of my immediate family, like my aunts and uncles and cousins, like there's like over 60 of us here right. in, in Austin. So whenever we would all be with family or holidays or just staying at grandma's for the weekend, it would be like 15, 20 kids there running in and out of the house. And they would always ask us to help them like knead dough or do something. And um, sometimes, not a lot of times, but sometimes I would stick around a little bit more and like ask questions or mm -hmm. see, pay attention to how things are done. And uh, from there they started, uh, showing me how to season and how to mm. unknowingly me now um starting to build my palette they were giving you the secret sauce too yeah they were yeah they were giving you the data mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i love it because primarily as a cook like for me like yeah you know learn how to hold your knife and learn how to plate a dish learn how to create an item but um, you can have all those things but like your palate to build flavor is a different yeah. a different yeah. technique. Yeah, and I feel like another thing that has helped me a lot is I have I have I can forget a lot of other things, but <laughs> when it comes to memorization of tasting something, yeah, how it's supposed to taste. I, I always joke and say like I can like, program it in my mind. Nice and yes. go and mess with it. You have and a, a add my twist memory card in your head. <laughs> a little bit. Like <laughs> what the flavors have to be. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. It's cool that you guys too. Like for people that haven't been there. Like, you guys are kind of like a no bullshit, like, taco truck. Like, there's not, like, I love that kind of, like, stripped down, like, this is what we this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And, like, you can come try it. Mm -hmm. And and we don't really do a lot of substitution mm -hmm. type things. And, like, there's not, there's not, like, a full, it's not like a typical Mexican or, like, Mexican restaurant or yeah. taco truck where they have, like, all these different, you know, burritos. And, like, you pick your protein and, like, kind of build your own thing. You're, you're just like, these are the six or five different meats we have yeah. we got a couple other things mm -hmm. that's it and then it's like it just seems like that stripped down kind of like menu approach is it just seems to work every time less you know is I mean? always more man yeah less is um, always more the but min the minimalism yeah i'm glad you're touching on that because that's a part of as i mentioned all the other things as to what i wanted to bring to people's minds of when they're eating at cuanto similarity to being in mexico is that's what so the mecca of Mexico City style um, of, of street tacos in Mexico started in Mexico City. Um, I'm sure there's always been stands and stuff like that, but like the city that you know, like you know that you're gonna go get some suadero, some choricera, like very like yeah. standard traditional style tacos down there is, is there, um, and it's just like it is in in a stand in Mexico, like on the side of a curb. It's literally a list of six to ten different cuts of meats and you asked the taquero how many because that's where the name came from mm -hmm. which i can go into a little bit too yeah yeah um so the first thing the taquero when you pull up to their stand is cuantos quieres huero or huera um uh, and that's where i got the name for for right. cuantos tacos and um, so yeah they'll they'll ask you how many you want and then they ask you with verdura or no uh meaning onion and cilantro and that's it so just keeping it simple baby yeah, yeah yeah it's like the and like i imagine each one like you're like 
oh, like they do pastor really good over here, or like mm-hmm. they, these guys mm-hmm. are right. So it's like each place yeah. kind of has their like, oh, yeah. and they just stick to that. They know what they're what they do good rather than like you know because now you got to wonder. You go to like you know you're like I wonder what they do the best, right? Mm-hmm. Like for me, if the Al Pastor's on the trompo, it's mm-hmm. I'm getting that yeah. every time. Yeah, man, no. I'm getting that every time. Yeah, and yeah. there's a little dude. I should take you over here. There's a there's a little secret food truck over here that's just killing it and they just like they i don't think people know about them it's yeah. lb lbn lbn taqueria and is it on cameron no it's on mainer oh. it's like in this parking lot next to a vape store over there i just oh, okay. i just outed them if anybody listens to the <laughs> podcast but that's where we go hit the the, nice. the they'll they have good good pastor and it's like man there's so many like sleeper taco yeah, places dude. around you never know yeah. you can't disc you can't count out like any taco truck no you have to try it because you never know mm-hmm. if somebody's just sitting on some some heat you yeah, know dude. yeah yeah like in austin i can say like the majority now people know it as a, like the taco mo- the taco mile um but like food trucks like that at late night that i remember noticed growing up here being born and raised here in austin like on lamar, lamar. Um, which one of the first trucks was matamoros tacos now they have a couple of them but um now from breaker to 183 on lamar it's like on one block you can have like four or five different trucks and they're all hitting uh i haven't kept up i haven't kept up in a while but um every now and then i take like homies or you know um people that are in the street just coming out Mm -hmm. of town and keep hearing about lamar um, I we'll think you mentioned that spot. to me too. Yeah, like you yeah, want. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We should definitely hit I that want, up. Yeah, I definitely yeah. want to um, go. Yeah, there's several that I always go to, and then there's one that's called Dos Hermanos. It's close to. Uh, there's like a on Lamar. There's a Seven Eleven and a Dairy Queen, and mm-hmm. like, it's right on like a mechanic shop. Um, that's my favorite taco spot there, and then there's um, Taco Charlie, which is another very very popular food truck on yeah. Lamar. Um, and then yeah there's just so it's many a, it's interesting because like I don't know I feel like the way that I think of things or we might think of things mm-hmm. where it's like I want to start a taco truck and it's mm-hmm. like I want it to be successful I want people to know about it I mm-hmm. want people to ca- it's like some people seem like they're just fine with like also like just putting a food truck up and just kind of like we just want to make food and like if th- and like make money to support our family yeah, off of this yeah. it's like there's it's funny how like the 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 clout doesn't matter to some mm-hmm. of these some mm-hmm. of these like a lot of these food trucks like yeah. they're not they're they're not trying to like you know post on instagram and mm-hmm. market they just throw the truck up and that that's pretty g you know no, what no, i mean no, like it's it you're yeah. like you're like damn they don't even care they're just like and yeah. that's almost probably why some of those are so good too mm-hmm. because they're mm-hmm. just they just kind of give a shit about the food and yep. their, their family and yeah, taking man. care taking care of people with the truck it's yeah. like the truck is just a source for life yeah for them. no no for sure and that's what a lot of them it's on lamar and in different areas of the city of austin now like that's what they're all just really trying to do um and honestly like i'm extremely grateful for everything and every opportunity we've had and you know and have but uh, uh people know me that like i'm very private yeah um, i know that i do like interviews and, mm-hmm. and do things but uh, <laughs> um uh, i can be very shy yeah i'm used to it now but like you almost wouldn't mind that other that other version of things where it's just a truck that just like isn't so pop so popular like would you yeah. would you would you be cool with that if like the fine if it, the financial success was the same but but the like quantos mm-hmm. clout wasn't there mm-hmm. would you still be would you would you still be stoked like or, may, or maybe with, would you like that more <laughs> with, with, with all of the great things like i said and with like a lot of there's a lot of there's been a lot of these last four years have been amazing but there also has been a lot of very difficult personal things yeah um and so many times you just want that back yeah um just because it's 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 crazy or just completely disappear right because it can be which is hard for you because you're, <laughs> you're I know. seven foot tall <laughs> I know, I, dude <laughs> yeah exactly very is that yeah. the guy from quantos yeah. i saw him on tv <laughs> yeah yeah man it's uh that's that's still insanely crazy to me that that do people come up and bother you sometimes when you're like and you're like bro i'm just trying to like live right now yeah no no <laughs> it, it it not to sound like that but it does kind of happen almost every day yeah depending on the part of town that i'm in but um i'm usually just going from a to b mm-hmm. i don't really um 
hang out too much. Like I don't really, I don't really drink. I don't really do stuff, so I don't really go out. I do like with homies and with friends whenever sure. there's a gathering or a party and stuff like that. But I really don't. You turn up when uh, you need to. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, man. Like there's, there's a uh, like I said, like all the amazing things, you know. But you know, you can never have. There's that aspect of privacy that sometimes you. Yeah, want. yeah, yeah, and then like whenever i go to a, a truck or i go to another business like that and people you know recognize me and um with more reason with with them i try to have a conversation with them because mm-hmm. i want to see where and how i can help in any way yeah dude that's what i've been doing like just with all the stuff mm-hmm. i've been doing with like comics and you know mm-hmm. people um that want to you know do a podcast or like like i basically just like i have this opportunity here and giving back seems to like it makes me feel good and it's it keeps me busy because mm-hmm. if i'm just focusing on like my own stuff mm-hmm. i don't know I'm, i don't it's hard for me to like stay inspired so it's like it's fun to help yeah other people with shit and it it always seems to come back to you like tenfold mm-hmm. yeah, you know yeah. what i mean like you're the relationships you can create and the friendships you can make just from like oh this dude helped me with this and then yeah. you know yeah. yeah 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 man it's just like you know we all should know by now that in life you will never stop learning and um yeah there's there's school and there's degrees and all that stuff but like you just have to live life and if you live life with helping others and for me um putting others before yourself you uh the reward of learning from the uh, the experience of helping or helping them get through something um is for me more than enough oh for sure um and uh yeah i don't i don't ever do anything expecting anything in return and yeah that's that's the big that's the the big part because Mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of people like oh maybe if like if i can get this guy on my podcast Mm -hmm. then maybe Mm -hmm. he'll you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and it's like Mm -hmm. you can't really think about it like that it's like i'm just trying to help you know like I have a little platform and I'm like, how can I help? You know, I do camera stuff. Mm-hmm. And like before I started doing like stand up more and like getting into that, I've been doing it for like a year now. Okay. Um, like before I started doing it, I just wanted to be like involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not yeah. to make it about me, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's like to, to piggyback on what you're saying. And so yeah. like, I was like, how can I help? Like I can't, I'm not funny enough to be, or like I'm not, I'm not experienced enough to be a door guy mm. at the, at the, com- at the comedy venues. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how can I help? and and still you know be involved and like i i was like i have a camera i take pictures for a living so yeah. I'll, I'll take pictures of these guys because because like you know and they're i'm not trying to be one of those photographers that like there's there's like a whole group that uh they're all i know a bunch of them they're really cool but mm-hmm. they they make like a part of their living on that mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i'm like i'm fine with like i, I have my money is fine with like yeah. the food pictures like i just want to be around this and yeah. be a part of this community and like and that's that was kind of the the little you know the inch that got mm-hmm. me to where i am i have a bunch of cool friends that are doing comedy they're hilarious people they make me funnier make me happier to be around you know what i mean exactly. so it's like and and we i've done a bunch of cool shit since i started you know taking pictures of these guys mm-hmm. and just helping out and that's how and that continue to like if somebody wants to record a podcast mm-hmm. and i have time I'll, mm-hmm. you know can help them do their podcast or whatever but it's like it's that kind of stuff it definitely uh it definitely ma- keeps me like creatively stoked on everything that I'm doing. Yeah. Cause yeah. if I was just going to like be the guy taking pictures of food, that would just get so boring. Like if yeah. you were just the guy that made tacos, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like there has to be more. That's why you're like, yeah. I'm going to open the hamburger mm-hmm. spot and you're teasing us. So it's saying you have other shit. Like people are hyped on that. Yeah. The yeah. way you're doing it too. It's kind of like you're, you're kind of like you're dropping mixtapes or something. <laughs> like you're just like, yeah, we got more, we got more. Those are just the throwaways. We got, you know what I mean? You're like, we got more, we got more hits lined up. Yeah, That's yeah, cool, man. yeah, man. Uh, the cool thing about it now is that, uh, well, the catalyst for this next topic, which is that I'm not really like I, I'll I'll be there, but my team just they're such amazing. Like, they're amazing in every way. Yeah, you've made uh, it a a well oiled machine that runs on its own, right? Yeah, yeah. I haven't. Um, I'm trying to make it this year to be there a couple of days and work several shifts and be like there and in hands the on. trenches more. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, like um, <clears throat> as I said, the catalyst for me to have stepped away for the last two two and a half years was my open chest heart surgery. Oh shit! Yeah. What uh, happened? So, um, twenty. 
Like 2020, I can't remember the year now. No, yeah, 2020 and then 2021 is when I believe I had the surgery. I can't remember anymore. But uh, when I was nine, I was diagnosed with Marfan syndrome. It's a tissue disorder. It's um, It's been hereditary in my family from my mom's side of the family. So a lot of my aunts, uncles, and cousins have it. Uh, it affects everything in your body, like your lungs, your teeth, your eyesight. A like tissue issue? A tissue, tissue disorder. disorder? Yeah, like mutation and everything. Oh, damn. Um, and, like, if you Google pictures about it, like, you'll see people with, like, you know, different body, like, deformities and different heights and, you know, facial structure that you uh-huh. can recognize them. And there's different stages of or different types of Marfan syndrome. Um, but one of the most common things that tends to happen with that is um, an aortic aneurysm. And um, I always knew with, you know, with seeing my mom and my aunts and uncles having that open chest heart surgery later in their 40s or so forth. It'd be hitting you at some point. Yeah. 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 So <sighs> uh, that's why when people always ask me, when you're so tall, you to play basketball. Like, I did, but <laughs> I had to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I can't be moving like that right now. Yeah, no. Um, and I did do it all through middle school, and I loved it so much. And I wish I could have kept it playing, but high school came around, and my doctor was you like, "Whatever you're doing, you could have been stop. pro, bro. That you could have been. You're built for the pros. Yeah. Dude. But then you wouldn't short, have. Though. Then you wouldn't have what you have now, though. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can't yeah. think about it like that. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. And I don't. And I did when I was younger because I didn't know any better, obviously. But mm-hmm. now, like you know, you know, my, I'm really strong with my faith, and God knows what He does. But. Um, uh, I wouldn't have done it any other way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had that surgery, and normally that surgery you can recover in about three, four months, depending on some things. But um, going into that surgery for the last year, year and a half of doing quantos and a little bit before that, I just was not taking care of myself at Stressed all with how I was eating, sleeping, sleeping, stress, and you know, obviously, um, you know, just so much going on. So I went into it already with the odds somewhat against me, and um, I was like, su- I was super overweight too, which did not help at all. So when I was in the surgery, I mean, before I went to the surgery, I wrote several pages for my manager Jose um, of what I what I would do every single day, from purchasing to prepping to when to fill things up and mm-hmm. do all these things. Um, because he, he was still kind of coming, he was he's been he's been with me for my first project, along with Adam, mm-hmm. another friend of mine. Um, Excuse me, you're good. Uh, so I had to make sure that I wrote as much as possible down, mm-hmm. like day by day and week by week, or even month by month, depending on how long things would happen. But um, yeah, once I found out in November of 2020. Oh, uh, the f- do you remember the by chance the freeze here in Austin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right? was like right before I moved here. So yeah, that it was, was like it was twenty twenty one. Couple months was, before I moved out. Yeah, here. it was the year. It was that. That was the year that I had the surgery. Great. Um, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just we were even able to more <laughs> just more stress. You know what I mean? Yeah, we like, were able to do some cool stuff with the Taco Mafia with that stuff, but I can go into that later. Yeah, yeah. We'll so, go. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah. So I had to leave everything as much ready as possible. Um, while at the same time trying to get some type of coverage to help with the surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, the I was wor- I've was i been working at the truck all the way up until then because, like, the business is still a year and a half in. Yeah, like, we have, you know, that, that notoriety and stuff, but it's well, still you can't a slip. startup. That's the moment that you can't slip, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, like, I'm de- cause I work – I'm close with John f- from Interstellar, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they're number two on the mm-hmm. that barbecue list, and, like – his day and day well, i'm gonna get him on here to talk about mm-hmm. it more but like him and his wife are just so like they work so hard yeah, man. to to make sure they're tasting the food the whole staff is tasting the food yep. multiple times a day mm-hmm. to make sure that it's like on point if anyone has any criticism they go down that rabbit hole until yeah. they figure it out you know what i mean yeah. and then it's like because if they slip up, then it's like like they they have to shoot for number one now, mm-hmm, which is mm-hmm. crazy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you you have to keep pushing. So it's like you can't get that notoriety and then slip on the quality of the food and be like, oh, Quanto sucks now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah yeah. You got to keep that rep up. It's almost like scary. That's the double edged sword of of success, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It's like once you. It, we, we see it in music all the time too where people will put out this album and it's like so good 
right yeah, and then yeah. it's like they kind of like all a lot of my favorite bands they they kind of shot themselves in the foot in like mm-hmm. 2009 because mm. like ever their whole fan base is like eh, hasn't really been it hasn't yeah. been right since that first album yeah you know what i mean and it's like for sure man. dude it's you know and i mean whether i agree with that or not it's just that's just how it's that's the tough part about mm-hmm. you know being successful with your art and, and you know in, in many ways food is your, it is yeah it's no, another no, form no, of art no it really is um so um yeah you know i was yeah going was back to your, just going your going you know going really strong with all that and then whenever i found out that i had to have it, it was like kind of hitting like a brick wall right with like stopping not even halfway into anything but like stopping what what the momentum was starting to get mm-hmm. going um so yeah then you know i had the surgery and then i ended up having complications during the surgery um and I had to be put on dialysis because I had kidney failure after oh, it. No, fuck, um, I was only supposed to be in the hospital for like a week, two weeks tops, but I was in there almost two months. Oh my god, um, that's a nightmare. Yeah, I went in at I was I was I, like I said I was pretty overweight from what I should have been. I was like three twenty, and in two months I was down to like two hundred pounds. Damn. Which is crazy for your. That's crazy skinny for your height. Almost hundred. I lost almost a hundred over a hundred pounds in just two months because I couldn't. Wild. Like I woke up, um, and I was I, I, w- I was kept under longer than what I sh- I would I was sedated longer than two days longer than what I should have been because it was just a rough um, trying to get woken up from the surgery. Um, and my ex-wife mentioned to me whenever she would be able to see me because I was also during. Um, COVID like the mid stuff. peak of, pen- of COVID. Oh my God, so, dude! <laughs> um, you got kicked while you were down like twice. <laughs> That's rough, dude. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. When I I remember, I still remember waking up, open up my eyes. Like, it felt like I was st- kind of starting all over again. But, like everything felt like, in inter- like digitized. Like I was like glitching. It was it was so weird. Weird. It was like, like you weren't was, fully rendered yeah, you're yeah. like <laughs> you're yeah. loading still no yeah because <laughs> i wasn't able to make a full sentence until like after like around the s- end of the oh second my week God. were you was it like a coma kind of uh, i don't like a know medic, no? I, I don't know but they, they had, had you under that they long. had to keep me under a little bit longer just to make sure my body could with could wait because um they wanted to put me on dialysis before i woke up but they had to wait for my body to recover from the actual surgery mm-hmm. itself to be able to you know so did you get a kidney transplant or did everything just start no, working again no man thankfully after four months of dialysis it and just me just mentally telling myself like and just praying like please make this work because they measure it by your creatine level um and it has to be down i believe to like a minimum of like one point something and it was closer to four so um they had me on oh, temporary yeah. dialysis but what dialysis is like can you explain to me and any any other dumb person i guess what dialysis <laughs> is because like yeah. I, I know everybody's heard that term mm-hmm. and how it relates to kidney failure but i mm-hmm. don't really understand what is it like chemo it's like, like I, the little I, f- I could be wrong in saying this uh, it's people fine. listening but it could be th- it's like the little brother of chemo because okay you're hooked up to that machine. They have to keep a catheter, whether it's in your arm or down your jugular. Oh my God. Um, and they have to keep that up because that's where they connect the line to, to uh-huh. pump the blood So they make like a port thing, it. yeah. Yeah. I think my mom had one of those when mm-hmm. she was going through like some cancer treatments. Yeah, stuff. when they were, from what I remember, if they run it through your jugular, it's usually uh, temporary, but when they have it on your arm, that's because you're, you're gonna doing be it for the rest of your life. Carrying around a bag for the rest of your life. Yeah, or just having to do dialysis because um, they're just it's, pumping it's like four days a week and mm-hmm. each day depending um is at least eight hours oh my god so you're yeah i remember my grandma had chemo we would go sit in there they had like a kids like a really nice mm-hmm. i still remember it vividly it was like a dope kids playroom mm-hmm. yeah because it would because it would you'd be in there for six yeah. hours you bet there was an n64 in there mm-hmm. you know you could oh, just nice. throw your kids in there and shut the door yeah and like you, they, you know but yeah it was th- that shit takes forever yeah man and, and it, it just drains you dude. like oh i already god. wasn't able to eat anything like the only thing i would keep down um that pretty much kept me alive was water obviously boiled eggs and campbell's chicken noodle soup 
everything. Shout out Campbell's. Every, for real. <laughs> Y'all kept me alive <laughs> uh, for like seven, eight months. Um, you might have to get a tattoo, bro. For real. You might have to put their name on it. Put, get, just get a soup can right here. I know. Dude. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send an email someday. And be yeah. like, hey, I want to do a collab. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, but yeah, no, man. That That's anything else. Smelling anything else. Like, uh, I would just throw it up or oh, throw yeah. up whatever water was in my stomach or whatever so when did you know that you were like good you know like was there a moment that you remember where you felt like you were out of the woods with, with? oh dude yeah when yeah. i was in the hospital after the surgery uh, that's another thing i had to it took me about f four or five months to be able to walk again really yeah so it affected your your ability to walk because you were bedridden for so long that the weight the lost weight dialysis mm -hmm. And just not being able to eat anything, and also just depression. Just so weak. Just, you, just yeah. like oh, depression. Yeah. It, like, you, like getting out, out of the surgery, not being able to talk right, not having can't see you your know, family. motor skills, can't see your family, can't see your daughter. Oh, um, the frustration. And knowing that you know she's wondering where I'm at and stuff. Right. And um, I had with me in my suitcase or my bag before I went to surgery. I, I took. Uh, switch i took my ipad i took my laptop thinking that i could be able to kill time with that but i had all those things and the tv in front of me and i didn't i wouldn't even turn it on it because the depression basically i would just, just stare like out the wall doze off throughout the day whenever because they would always that's the other thing man they would always wake me up because i was so weak they had to draw blood from me every morning at 5 a.m so whenever i would get start to get into some sleep surely enough they would Needle come in, in your arm we yeah and then because you know so much of it i wasn't able to i wasn't there was no real nutrients flowing through my body because i couldn't keep anything down they were poking me everywhere and every arm they were about to go they poked them between my toes because no other veins were up oh my god they were dude. about to go into my fingers and i was like it's literal uh, torture you were like to in jail <laughs> you were like in torture jail only it's kind of worse because at least in jail you're not like hmm. you know you're yeah, not yeah. like bedridden sick yeah you know yeah. what i mean like on dialysis and shit. yeah that's yeah that is crazy that you pulled through from that yeah i'm, I'm glad you're here bro thank you man yeah thank that's you. crazy thank you yeah the thing about that was like they were like i said they were about to go into my fingers and i was like please don't because i work with my hands yeah and i'm afraid that they would like strike a nerve or hit something and like, yeah. one of my fingers just won't be working anymore and then you'd be screwed even when you get out of there yeah yeah so um yeah man and then like towards the end of the second month i was telling my doctor she was telling me like you're gonna have to be here for a little bit longer like um i can't i like please let me let me go so um i was starting to i was starting to bring i was starting to, to take in some fruit so that started to help a little bit slightly mm -hmm. and then um the the rehab doctors would come in three times a week and for the first month i would like tell them to leave because i didn't want to do anything and i, I just couldn't well it's probably like i always think about that when you see in movies and stuff mm -hmm. or whatever like people like get paralyzed and they try to like learn how to walk again and they do a pretty good job of depicting the mental struggle with that but mm -hmm. it's like it's got to be so defeating when you're just like you can't do something as simple as move your your fucking legs mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's like like in the, it's like no i don't want to do that again because yeah. that makes me feel p helpless and powerless yeah. Yeah, is and that kind of how you were feeling yeah and just being in pain like i couldn't turn I'm a side sleeper, so I have to be Same. facing up uh, mm -hmm. every time. So I got I a to. I got a pillow recommendation for you. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Write that down, please. Um, and also, obviously, like my scar, I can show it to you, but it runs from my collarbone down to like my abdomen. They just tore, almost they tore that. They just tore it's into just you. Just a big cut. <sighs> opened me up. Oh, went to work, and they have to open up your like rib cage and stuff. Yeah, to get through to the that to the, is to the artery. That is so wild, dude. Yeah, there <laughs> are some so <laughs> weird. It's like it's like a saw movie. It's so hard to comprehend dude. that people that they actually do that. Mm -hmm. They'll just rip you mm -hmm. open like mm -hmm. a horror movie and just and hold you and with just, some cranks. And just <laughs> yeah, and just put town. you right back together. Yeah, dude, it's 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 crazy. Well, I'm glad you made it through. What was it like when you knew that you were like gonna go home and see your daughter again? Was it like and that you were like gonna make it? You weren't gonna die in that hospital and like yeah. you were able to walk again? Were you? wheelchair for a while when you were yeah. out of there yeah okay. i was in a wheelchair god that has um, to be just mentally just so, so rough yeah man because i excuse me 
Yeah, man, because I, like I said, I've always been one to do things for others and mm-hmm. do. You're the helper. Do everything. The fixer. But not being able to walk, not being able to do things for yourself, not being able to shower for yourself <sighs> for months, not being able to like, just do anything and just not wanting to, like having those thoughts of like not wanting to be here anymore sucked um and that that to date is the darkest part of my life um in that aspect but yeah uh, that's a part of the thing that you know going back to being a a business owner just doing something like you know people you know understand they see you know the front like the business the food and all these amazing opportunities and stuff but they they, they don't really know we all have our struggles and we're all humans and have things and are going through things and um you know don't run up on some don't run up on somebody (laughs) no (laughs) no i'm kidding yeah no no but it's yeah it is interesting and it works that way too with like celebrities you don't know what people are going through that day Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and 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 you know we we definitely I've I've dealt with a little bit of it just with with bands being on tour mm-hmm. and it's like you're sick and it's cold and you feel like shit and you haven't slept yeah. good in a while. I mean, it's nothing compared to you know what you mm-hmm. went what you've gone through, but it's like, yeah, it's definitely it's like people just don't they don't know what's going on. Like you said, they see the they see the front the the mm-hmm. they see the image and the front the the front of the business or or you know see you on stage and they you know and that's and it sucks too because it's like there's there's really no escaping it. Like if you want to be successful, you want to be a part of a community or a scene or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like you you have to be. There's an act like you know. There's an aspect of being successful that comes from being you know, friendly person and networking mm-hmm. and like that. That's all part of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And and so it's. It's a necessary evil. Yeah. No. And you that's know? what what you just mentioned about right now about you know, uh, the support is while i was out and you know trying to 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 get back to life i guess um i would get messages and um texts from restaurateurs and friends in the industry mm-hmm. that would you know go to quantos and you know they would always be telling me like it's like you haven't left like with the food and the oh, service nice. like that. So that was another like shout ease. out to jose right yeah the team the whole Damn, team bro. Reed, Allen, chandler everybody they mobilize for yeah, you dude yeah, yeah. that's awesome and they're still doing it like hell uh, yeah like, i i yeah i can't wait to be able to repay them all back are you guys gonna ever do like a like a brick and mortar type thing what's the plan yeah. is there any plan you can talk about for that and if if not i guess i would just ask why mm-hmm. why would you stick to a truck versus mm-hmm. a brick and mortar you know yeah so the original plan was to start off small with the truck and you know build things up and see how things are going and then oh, have that one like flagship restaurant here in austin this is all like before mm-hmm. quantos be- before i even thought things would happen with quantos have the flagship in austin and i've always been in love with new york mm-hmm. i've always wanted to do something up there yeah um, that would be sick yeah yeah and i've always th- um i've never been but um canada mm-hmm. is another place that i've kind of had in mind and boy do they need tacos yeah they need they you could just you're yeah. just out here rescuing <laughs> rescuing food scenes in america you need to just like they throw the top the quanto symbol in the sky you know we need ta- we need get decent tacos around here you could yeah. open up all over dude and yeah, change yeah. the taco game in these little t- small towns and shit and yeah, wyoming <laughs> yeah no for sure um but yeah that was the plan uh, mm-hmm. the original plan and you know obviously all these personal things you know had to but all these other growth things in in, in standstill. Uh, but now with you know things kind of you know clearing up mm-hmm. um, for everybody, for my team and in their personal lives, and um, how fast they're all growing in the company, and what you know projects that we have going on, and we have in the foreseeable future. Um, I have been trying the last couple of years to get a space. I was almost so close last year, like I was about yeah. to sign, and then. Sure enough, it fell through, and like that I kind of mentioned in when we first met. Don't you think that that kind of stuff can be like such a blessing in disguise sometimes? Because mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. had things fall apart like that. Yeah. And then you go back and you're like, man, I'm glad I'm not in business with him. Yeah. Or yeah. like, man, I'm glad that you know that was cl- we we dodged a bullet. You find mm-hmm. out somebody's crazy or mm-hmm. something. You were gonna be a part of the landlords of, of this crazy guy or something. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like. 
like you you just you can it those moments of that what feel like failure or whatever can mm -hmm. so quickly you know within six months to a year you can be looking back being like man we wouldn't be quantos mm -hmm. if if we if that's if that that japanese you know mm -hmm. uh, mexican fusion place would have worked out we yeah. would have never had quantos mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then that's crazy to think about yeah that's crazy to think about that if if what was the first spot called uh oyama oyama mm -hmm. if if oyama would have hit mm -hmm. then we then the world would have probably never never seen quantos or not for a couple of years mm -hmm. yeah you yeah. know so that's yeah no that's and, crazy yeah it's crazy when you think about that yeah with you know going through all things in life and you know obviously you know what happened these last couple of years with recovering like um i've always been a pretty patient person but just like anybody else when you see something that you're like very hyped on you want to go on it mm -hmm. but a long time ago i just came into the realization that like if there's a lot of resistance or there's circles running around things like just let it go yeah um, there's no reason to like beat yourself down or like try to think that no i want this i deserve it mm -hmm. that's to me that's ne that's never been the case it's just try and if it works out cool and even if you try and it does work out but somehow later on down the road something happens it's life it's mm -hmm. a learning experience good or bad um but these last couple of times it was it was like like i told you the last time i was like, s like days out of closing and signing yeah. on space where was it uh um, i don't know if, you, if it you was on it was, it, it's on chestnut oh yeah it was that's kinda, in, it was in my that's in my hood dude like like I, i've since quanto started i bet i know where it is <laughs> you probably do <laughs> um it um uh, i've always had the design in uh, for the taqueria in my mind mm -hmm. and i finally drew it out because i was getting so close like i said so i drew it out multiple times and um i'm getting a little kid excited just dude, thinking it about it it would have been it, it it's gonna been, be so it's okay it would have been it's like, okay dude it's gonna I be know. so sick when you do when you get that spot it's gonna be so lit because like not only the space was awesome but like i already know like quantos can do much more like things on the menu mm -hmm. easily that will maintain that simplicity but just broaden things up for people mm -hmm. and uh that space would have been just perfect for everything but doesn't like, that make it doesn't that make it juicier when mm -hmm. you get the next one you're just like all right well the then the yeah. we're just gonna tear this thing dude, up next dude, time like, the next spot we get when we ink that deal mm -hmm. you're gonna be out there with a sledgehammer dude just yeah. doing demo dude like oh, i'm man, excited like, for I, that I, dude I, I anyone who listens it. to this and knows your tacos and your <laughs> and and the, the the food you guys put out we're mm -hmm. we're jacked on it the idea of yeah. a brick and mortar dude. tony <laughs> come on dude come on <laughs> dude man i got i got some real dope stuff we'll so. talk after i got some i got something i want to throw you at, throw okay. an idea i want to throw at you yeah, afterwards yeah. but um let's talk about the taco mafia because mm -hmm. i see the name all over the place and i don't know um i i haven't maybe i haven't looked into it mm -hmm. enough but and i know that it's a group of dudes you guys all do restaurant stuff but like yeah. why is it a thing and like what is the goal for it and where did it come about yeah so it's four of us <clears throat> myself Juan Los Tacos, Nixta Taqueria, Discada, um, and originally known as La Tunita, uh, now as Palo Seco. Um, but he's kind of he's kind of doing his, his own thing respect like respectfully and he's still a part like as much as he would he's still one of the boys. As much as he wants to, to be a part of, we're open and welcome to everything. We miss him, Jerry. We miss you. <laughs> um, uh, so, yes, yeah, the four of us. Um, so, Discada was the first trailer open out of all four of us. They were open a year before us. Um, and then I opened up in September 2019. And then Nix Atacaria opened up a month after in October of 2019. So, I opened up. I had already known about this guy and I had went and visited them and um, I spoke with Jose the very first time that I went to. Jose is one of the owners of this guy. He's from Mexico City. And I had mentioned to him like, hey, I'm, you know, planning on doing this and um, like Mexico City style. And he was like, oh, cool. Yeah, just let me know and I'll swing by. Um, and then I opened up and his partner, Anthony, um, came to the truck one night. I didn't, I didn't recognize because I hadn't met him. I had just met Jose. So he came to the truck and then he came back again the same night 
and I noticed him coming back again with some other people. So I was like, I just reached out. And at that time, it was just me a lot of the times. And then Jose, my GM, he would be there with me Fridays and Saturday nights. Like the, mm-hmm. what I the busy th- nights. thought was going to be at yeah, the busier nights. Uh, so when I saw him came back later, I uh, to him and then to other regulars that were keep coming with us, I would always invite them into the truck because I wanted them to see my setup. Mm-hmm. And I wanted them to see my setup is just like you would see at a stand in Mexico City. It has the you guys the do the round the yeah, round thing, yeah, right? The the choricera, yeah, which choricera. is a big raising pot with an elevated dome in the middle, so all the meats are being cooked around, and you can cook the tortillas on the dome, or we just have a plancha right next to it, and then we have a chopping block. So it's the chopping block, the choricera in the middle, and then the plancha for the tortillas and the quesadillas. And uh, we would just grab the meat. We still we do everything exactly the same. We grab the meat from the pot, put on a chopping block, and then serve mm-hmm. it. Um, so I wanted them to see that because I haven't seen that until the then preparation uh, here in, the same in here way. In, in Central Texas yeah. at least. Um, so I wanted people to like exceed that experience that and just you know building you know customer base as well and just you know showing people what I mm-hmm. love to do. So I invited him in and then he told me he's well, he was one of the owners of Piscada. And he was telling me about how he's been waiting for a place like this to open up ever since he moved to Austin. Nice. Um, and, you know, we were just kind of going back and forth about, you know, where we're from and, you know, what we do and all this stuff. So um, the day after that, or, yeah, yeah, the night after that, um, Edgar and Sarah and his team were, I think, doing tastings for Nixta before it opened. So one of those nights, Tony brought them to Quantos. And that's where me and Edgar met. And Edgar, you know, the same thing, just psyched that we were here and we were open. And we're all also like in the same age group. Mm-hmm. And then at that time, I remember bringing it up to them, like, hey, like, I know we just met, but, um, and we started talking about, like, what our goals are, uh, not just in business, but in, in life. And I was just bringing it up, like, hey, man, like, it'd be cool one day if we, you know, all start hanging out together and, you know, help each other grow and see what what we can do to help us and other people and which is shit that you never see in restaurant Mm -hmm. culture i feel like it's very competitive it's hard to get two chefs to be nice to each other and Mm -hmm. and and do stuff together you know what i mean sometimes like the like kitchen cooks and chefs are very Mm -hmm. restaurant owners are very uh they're very strong personality types Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. they think they know you know think they think a lot of them think their way is the way and so it's like you don't see a lot of you don't see you see a lot of collaboration Mm -hmm. but but you don't necessarily see people kind of like grouping up to help each other and stuff so that's kind of that's very interesting yeah and Um, that that has changed um over the years kind of here in the city that i've noticed with you know now being around restaurateurs and stuff like that and obviously we all see it with different collaborations different Mm -hmm. pop-ups from different places but um yeah man from there we we pretty much hit it off and they were coming to the truck they were one of the people like coming to the truck almost every night to come eat tacos and just hang out and drink beers keeping that keeping that thing alive yeah (laughs) yeah so it's awesome and then the same they were just helping spread the word and get things going and then our relationship kept growing stronger and stronger and um we always knew like there's plenty to go around for everybody and yes. why not work together to yeah 100 percent against each other so. that mentality is so important i mm-hmm. think with with anything yeah with music and metal metal music mm-hmm. specifically it's so so much feast or famine mentality you know and just yeah. uh you see it with comedians it's the big the big dogs that are in town in comedy they they kind of talk against it and mm-hmm. say let's help each other all mm-hmm. out which is mm-hmm. good you know what i yeah. mean kind of much like you are doing for restaurants you know what i mean and people just getting started in restaurants like i just even think coming on here and talking about it or mm-hmm. talking about it in interviews like you've talked about it before it's like that kind of like people will think when they go to start their taco shop or whatever their restaurant that like oh like you know I heard, you know, somebody I look up to that mm-hmm. that runs a successful taco shop talking about how we need to help each other out and, yeah. you know, not just be looking out for yourself. And so it's like that kind of stuff mm-hmm. I think is really important to hear from people who, uh, you know, you admire or look up to or aspire to be like. Yeah. Yeah, man, because I, I don't know if I mentioned or did an interview, but I grew up on I grew up in North Austin, Lamar, Rumberg area. OK, like literally my house was right behind where 
that taco mayo is mm-hmm. um so my family still has my sister still has our childhood home that's um, cool so every now and then um i go to those trucks and i just speak with the owners and same people some of the same people from when you were young too owning those trucks no a lot of changed. them a lot of them are are not the same people that mm-hmm. were when i was lived there um because there weren't there weren't as many at all but um to some you know that are interested in having a conversation i ask them like i tell i let them know like if you ever have a question about anything because a lot of them um just take cash yeah um they don't have so like they don't, they don't have the card thing set yeah, up yeah they don't have i don't know if um understanding it or just being afraid of of, of that system or not wanting off. to pay the fees or something that th- that too um but i just they know it but you know there has been like a lot of theft in there because a lot of people mm-hmm. know that they do have cash mainly cash so um but just even like random connections with like trailer stuff or equipment or just i just let them know like if you guys have any questions about anything or just want to chat or talk or whatever like i've been doing the same thing for photography stuff mm-hmm. too like i will like and it's so cool to see like i don't know if you've experienced this with you know all the stuff that you've done to help help other restaurant mm-hmm. owners or people that want to get into the to the game but mm-hmm. it's like i've <clears throat> i've had a couple people now that like oh man i'm thinking about picking up a camera i don't mm-hmm. know though and i i help them find one you know online or something and then like I, they just answer questions for me and then six months a year they're like doing it full time mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. or like and that is that's where it's at that's so cool to see you know what i mean when yeah. you can be like oh man like and it's not like i did it it's like they wanted to do it mm-hmm. yeah. but i was just available for as a resource yeah and it's like oh yeah he went out he got after it you know yeah. what i mean like yeah and that's cool yeah. you know what i mean that's, that's actually something um one of the recent futures that i've been like very like like mentorish with and became really good friends with the family is uh la santa barbacha i don't know if oh. you had them yet dude so i live next door oh that's right yeah that's right so yeah, i remember you saying that yeah yeah so we love them yeah they're blowing yeah. up so yeah, hard too yeah they're amazing people like they're super cool yeah a couple of years ago well, back when they were in their original location on south austin uh taylor i don't know if you know taylor mm-hmm. from either oh uh, from what taylor elliott from like um not not the the national eater i don't remember his handle i think it's oh oh the, the he does awesome. like content and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i've seen his stuff before okay, yeah, yeah yeah so he <coughs> he's very good he's a good homie of mine and for some time he was mentioning to me like you should go check out this truck and i was um i had been trying to but then i had noticed they were over on frontage road right uh at before the, that yeah oh before that South. yeah okay yeah before they were even over here at their last spot native um I was able to make it one day and it was literally the last day they were going to be at that old location Mm -hmm. and i met uh rosa Mm -hmm. right away and then right away we just started you know talking about um things that she was experiencing and a lot of things that she was trying to learn because it was the first time that they ever did a Mm -hmm. food truck too um so ever since then like we've been amazing friends and with her and with her family and her sisters and her brothers she's really cool we've yeah. talked to her a few times mm-hmm. going over there yeah yeah and uh from then till now and they know they they couldn't always reach out to me for whatever it's just been helping them and so I'm, like seeing how like in the the place that they were in a couple of years ago and like seeing them now like everything that they're able to like mm-hmm. they're doing and all the recognition that they're deservedly getting like it's it's amazing well to, there's so to much see. i'm finding that <clears throat> like even you know I, I guess you could call it selfishly it's like there's so much value in teaching somebody how to do things mm-hmm. for there's so much value for for the teach for the teacher mm-hmm. if you're if you're gonna if I when I have to go back through my brain and think about all the stuff I've learned about photography or business or podcasting mm-hmm. or whatever and like um uh, it, it like it's like going back over it with like a fine-tooth comb yeah. and being like wait how did I do mm-hmm. that or how did I handle that situation you yeah. know what I mean yeah. or 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 you know what did I learn when I did this and it's like it's it just makes me so such a better like photographer for example mm-hmm. when i when i'm when i go back over everything and that's why somebody's like hey man can i get asked like, yes please because then i have to go back and like think critically about this thing that's kind of been like quantos for you has been kind of on like 
autopilot like for mm-hmm. like you're like you know what you need to do so you go in and do it like i bet when when you were in the hospital and you had to write that thing out for jose mm-hmm. you went back through and you're like damn i really have been doing all this yeah like yeah. Th- these are each the things i've been doing and, and you probably wrote some shit down and you're like maybe i maybe i should have done this differently i'm gonna oh, have yeah. jose do this differently because mm-hmm. i've been doing it wrong yeah right and it's like you learn all this stuff about you know how you how you approach things and how you did things and i think that it's healthy to go back and do that. So it's like if you just made it and you got successful and then you just stop stop thinking about how you got there, mm-hmm. then I don't know, maybe maybe you'd slip, you know what I mean, yeah. or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, There's yeah. something to that, though. I feel it every time I help somebody, I get better, too. Mm-hmm. And when I help somebody learn some stuff that I learn and – there's no sense in you know gatekeeping that kind of information. Yeah. I don't think you yeah. know what I mean. It doesn't no. get you anywhere. It's not like you're giving them the recipe or the the you know what I mean. Yeah. The, it's not like you're yeah. giving them the the the, the sauces up here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Yeah. So it's like speaking of, I've never even written out our recipes. Oh really? Also in my head. Good. Yeah. Well, that's that's the I, only place they're safe, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, they're gonna have to download them from your Neuralink <laughs> chip in probably tw- twenty fifty, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, did yeah. all that? Did all those recipes and stuff come from like your your mom and family stuff, or is it refined over time with your your palate? It, it just kind of like the way that you're. You know, t- especially if you've never written it down, it's like mm-hmm. that's kind of crazy, actually. Mm-hmm. You never written down a single thing, a n- single recipe thing just for Quantos. Some of the sauces, but I just show them, and also like uh, my cook sign non disclosure agreements. Too. Mm-hmm. Hell um, yeah, to, to lock it up. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, like how we prepare the meats that hasn't been written. Some of the like one of the sauces has, but um, yeah, no, all that stuff. I created on my own just by tasting. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I was able to go the very, very first time before I opened up Quantos to Mexico City, because I had never been, because all my family's from northern Mexico, Tamaulipas mm-hmm. area. Okay. Um, and they do have that, but if you're trying to go to the foundation of something, I always thought, like, just go to where it started, and that's Mexico City. Uh, so, <coughs> so, yeah, I was just tasting from all the different stands, and... Uh, came back and I knew what the initial foundation of some of those recipes were um, so I just fell back on my techniques of how to cook because I went to culinary school Le Cordon Bleu mm-hmm. so that you know that taught me how to be able to break down or process or cook different things different ways yeah and like what is this missing or yeah yeah, 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 yeah. or how long to cook something because not mm-hmm. everything cooks the same obviously how to cut something how to specifically cut something to a certain size to where it maintains the integrity without falling apart as you're trying to serve it right before it gets to there's know, so many levels to this uh, to that it's, game it's dude. beautiful it's I love awesome it. i love it i love I love stuff like that. Um, it's a puzzle. It is. It's 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 uh I'll I'll i before coming in here I just had a meeting when when will this air? What? When will this air? Uh pff, probably next week. Oh yeah. okay. Yeah. That's fine. I had a meeting with uh, my uh homie Yoshi and Will from Otoko. I don't know if you've I don't think I've been there. Oh you should, okay. you should. what's it called? Otoko. They're O-T-O-K-O? on South K-O? Congress. Mm-hmm. It's Japanese sushi Mikase. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. I love that shit. Um, yeah, I just had a meeting with him, and we're working on a pretty cool collaboration. Oh, like nice. Omakase, so are you got, Are you going to take another March. crack at that at that original idea? Uh, that, that yeah, I'm didn't gonna work bring, out the first time. Yeah, I'm going to bring one of those items back from there. Oh, nice. Um, now people, if they listen to this, they're getting the lore. You <laughs> know what I mean? They're getting the yeah. the history. Yeah. So as we were talking about techniques and all those things, like yeah. my mind has been turning gears on the f- my foundation of what I do this profession for is like cooking and uh, before I opened up food trucks my main interest my main pool which is why I wanted to work in kitchens in Europe was more of the fine dining kind mm-hmm. of like plating and tasting the artistic and like that. Yeah, shit behind that, it that 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 always caught my mind because as the same as I just mentioned earlier just the fascination of the techniques of how every component on a plate serves a purpose Mm -hmm. um and it's much more intricate and more refined at in that format um but since i've been operating food trucks the last 10 years that kind of has been sitting on a standstill for all this long so 
I feel like right now people get, get people people have me boxed in as just like a taquero, a taquero yeah. guy, but they have no idea like, <laughs> oh, how many yeah, other things dude. like I love to actually do. They don't get what's going on <laughs> up here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah. So yeah, these last um, uh, these last couple of months, um, uh, I've been rekindling that flame and. Uh, one of the talk, one of the doc, one of the, doc- one of the documentaries that I could recommend for people in all walks of life to watch um, is called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Oh J-R-O. yeah, I've heard of that. That's an older one, huh? Yeah, it's like 2010, 2011. Whenever that thing first came out, while it was in theaters at Biden Crown, I would go every weekend until it wasn't in theaters. And whenever it came out on the, whenever it came out on DVD, I bought it and just been watching it all the time really um that's the other thing for that like inspiration and stuff yeah i just loved it that's yeah. the other thing is like when i get fascinated about something like music or um or like uh just anything at all mm-hmm. i have this thing and it's annoying for a lot of people that are <laughs> around me like my my daughter she doesn't care because she now does the same thing that i do like, <laughs> you created song, another i could listen to the exact same song for months yeah during the day before I go to sleep I do like the same could thing be the exact same song and I just have it on repeat for days weeks months on out just get a, a, she's, when you like something you like it yeah yeah and then um, so uh, my fire has been rekindling for that 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 style of, of cooking again and let's go um, dude let's I have, go I have a lot of amazing support right now yeah uh, with my partner and uh, we're we're working on some cool stuff and I had just mentioned to her about you know my passion for that mm-hmm. and we watched Jiro Dreams of Sushi and uh, I started explaining about how I don't know if I should say it but uh, I'll give a hint but before Quantos and like I said my original thing was fine dining uh, like you know um, more tasting stuff uh, later on down the road I would have always wanted to do like a seasonal place Mm -hmm. like five months out of the whole year and having a specific amount of seats no more than like 20 or 30 seats at a time and um, ticketed or almost or like it it would just be reservation based yeah but um doing it omakase yeah and breaking it into different uh, sections and different regions of Mexico being yeah those 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 sections. I know what it is, but can you explain what omakase is for people that don't? Know yeah, what it's is? like it's like a chef's way of you know serving you a, a spread. Yeah, of like you tasting don't items. Yeah, you don't basically pick what you order. Mm-hmm. They come, it's what it's what the chef it's a chef's menu. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, that yeah, that, cool, that, that has been. Like, I've I missed that side of me of being able to think about food like that because I felt like Fuck I had yeah. given up on it and just yeah. you know going with what what was here. But like as of that late, that fire still lives with, with lives inside of you, man. As of late, so then as I meant going back to Otogo, yeah. Um, after I had brought up you know my my idea, the day after, um, the homies reached out to me and were like, hey, um, if uh, of like you know mentioning interest of doing a collab at Otoko mm-hmm. and it would be like an omakase style mm-hmm. thing so I was like I just got back from from the meeting with him and my mind was already just like I already know what I'm gonna do oh, yes. how I'm gonna do it I miss breaking things down specifically like that yeah, so like it's time to get in the kitchen dude yeah so from here all the way up until I think right now we have the date somewhat set for March 3rd um, yeah is this a new restaurant idea or is this just a pop-up thing that you guys are going to be doing oh no this is just a, a collab at a collab their, at okay their space sweet yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah man i'll try to make sure i'm there yeah yeah i'll try to make sure i'm there i'll keep in touch yeah i think we're gonna do maybe two. i can maybe i can take some pictures of the food dude yeah if, like before Absolutely. it drop before you got like when you yeah. guys are testing you can hit me up i'll come through and yeah, yeah, take yeah. some pictures yeah, please do yeah we're gonna have like um at least a month before it actually goes down we're gonna have like um some media homies and mm-hmm. you know, We'll let you know as well to come over and we're going to prepare every item so that way we can have like promotional yeah, yeah. pictures for it and start i basically just did the, the same thing for uh, uh huckleberry and oh. uh um, texas sushi co they did they're mm. like good friends and so they did a omakase thing too with like a uh nice. um, yakitori uh quail leg oh, and sick. like 
a, a sweet potato puree thing for nice. dessert nice. and like some uh, I don't remember what was in them uh, fritters duck mm-hmm. fat fritters mm-hmm. it was cool it nice. was and it was the the photos came out good but it was because it's like it was all plated really nice you know yeah. and like yeah it was yeah, yeah 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 i'm excited to see how you how you guys do that together that'll yeah. be pretty crazy i haven't been to huckleberry man that's been on my list since i opened up let's go i know I let's know. go get some let's go get some fish and chips dude, dude. let's do it man let's do like, it man let's go I, eat let's go all over town <laughs> i have i have a we got to go to Leroy's uh Leroy's oh, yeah. uh how far, brick and mortar how, how soon yeah yeah like hey. next month they're trying to be oh, serving whoa. by by the first whoa okay ambitious nah, i think that's, that's what he told me well we're doing a staff party thing here <clears throat> um the next couple of days and i'll we'll see how oh, much okay. more. but it's like every day he's posting something mm-hmm. that's like mm-hmm. you know the ordering the yeah. the carving block is all done i'm like dude it was just a it happens so quick at this yeah. phase it seems like because it's like you know it's all tarps and mm-hmm. insulation and then like the month before they open it's yeah. like the tiles going in uh-huh. and it's like oh damn it looks <laughs> like a restaurant my best friend who got me into photography mm-hmm. um like he's i've known him since middle school he's moving here in the next week Oh, okay. And uh, and he might be getting a job there. So it's like oh, kind sweet. of this whole family thing. You know, they're yeah, so yeah. family. Like, they're, yeah, no. they're the best, dude. Yeah, no, Evan, no. Evan says has nothing but good things to say about you, too. It's yeah, awesome. No. He's, Hopefully you guys could do something someday. That uh, would be I'm, rad. We, we, a barbecue taco collab? Yeah, back when – because we were both on Somebody Feed Phil. I don't know mm-hmm. if you ever saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, that's kind of around – On the, Netflix, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of around the time that uh, – I believe I met him a little bit before that, but you know we were chopping it up, and He's the man. since then we have been talking about doing something, and you know that 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 could still, I would love to be a part of that and do that. That would oh, be awesome yeah, for sure. Um, one of the other things I wrote down I wanted to talk to you about was just kind of like being your own, you know, boss and like being in charge of your own shit, mm-hmm. and it, how like for me that always is like a difficult thing like you know everybody's like oh like you're so lucky you get to like be your own boss and it's like (laughs) i am blessed for sure Mm -hmm. and i would not want it any other way Mm -hmm. but there's kind of these things that people don't always know or see about just like like my plate is constant it's always constantly full so Mm -hmm. when i when i move something off of it and finish a project for somebody or finish my my, you know editing my podcast for the week Mm -hmm. i have another podcast for somebody else i got to do and i have like it just something else goes in its plate and i was just you know you kind of touched on it when you were talking about you know when you were in the hospital and stuff and Mm -hmm. all the stuff you got he had to write down but it's like how do you stay you know motivated organized inspired like what do you you know what do you do you have some people have to like go on walks in the middle of the day i've been trying to find i've been trying like all these different things like i just brought a yoga mat in today right so i can just like stretch out for a minute and just breathe like halfway through the day it's like keep my mind straight but it's like you know are you very like schedule calendar are you calendar guy you know like i try to be i try to be be, too but it's it is hard because sometimes you'll look at stupid oh that was yesterday oh shit i'm fucked up (laughs) uh, hey we made it here though we made it here dude (laughs) and we scheduled this like a month ago so we did it my partner was my partner was reminding me last night hey are you ready for the podcast i was like oh (laughs) (laughs) thanks for not bailing bro no 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 way um no um you want some more water yeah please yeah yeah but yeah no it's it's just like in life and everything whether you're you know working at a place or you're doing your own thing like there's 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 seasons not only you know obviously climately wise but Mm -hmm. like seasons in life and there's seasons for a reason um what uh, do you mean by that as in seasons of trial um trial and error and just life just like you know an emergency of like whether health or a loss of a family member or somebody so seasons almost like a tv show yeah if anything yeah yeah, that's that's what that's what that's what this like that two months in the hospital was just like that Mm -hmm. was the that was the dramatic Mm -hmm. season of your show dude yeah so far yeah. yeah um but what i have gotten close back to i have always been around it but um as of late, I have um, my faith um, is my my everything. Mm-hmm. Um, is a reason why um, we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect, um, but I try to do things to where, like I said earlier, I put others before me. 
um, I surrender myself to my faith every day to God. Um, and how I kind of lightly mentioned about how if things aren't working out, I just let them go. But now it's literally from the beginning of my day, I do it every day. I start that with, I have these things planned, but let your will be done through me. Um, meaning if one, how I treat others, how I love others, how I serve and respect others, and then what thing, whatever things I have planned that I don't write down and I maybe forget, but mm -hmm. uh, letting go. Um, like if something doesn't work out, it's like mm -hmm. it's not gonna. You can't let it affect your your vibe. Yeah, your energy. yeah, yeah. But I have to do. I have to treat others and treat situations with respect and love. Um, as I mentioned, we're all nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes, and sometimes mm -hmm. we we can allow things to get the best of us. But um, at the end of the day, I remember what I th think I'm supposed to be doing and doing it one way and uh, going going from there because at the end of the day like I don't know from my experience like we can do things like I said earlier thinking that these things belong to us or we or we deserve these things but uh, from what I've lived like to me God has the final say for whatever what for whatever's to come mm -hmm. um so um i guess th that kind of goes into when you asked about what keeps you inspired. focused inspired and yeah um as of late of me going back to my faith has been that and then through that are you kind of finding like <clears throat> oh yeah, I was like really passionate about this, mm -hmm. this fine dining stuff. Like mm -hmm. that's important for like, cause like with, to, to put it into perspective for the way that, that I'm doing stuff, it's like, there's four pillars to what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And everybody just thinks I'm doing way too much shit. And I probably am, but th there's music and the band and there's podcasting and there's comedy and then there's photography. And mm -hmm. those are the four pillars to like what I want to do that makes me happy and makes me feel like I'm pursuing the things I want to do in life. Mm -hmm. And if, and if I were to <clears throat> not do one of them, I think that the rest of them would suffer. Yeah. Right. So for you, for me, the way that I'm thinking about it with you, it's like, mm -hmm. if you are, get sick of just the, the Taquero stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna, it's if you don't go and do pursue this other thing that is totally different than those mm -hmm. those things the the fine dining stuff mm -hmm. the omakase stuff then then i feel like your excitement your passion for the quantos and the hamburguesa stuff mm -hmm. that could be affected you know what i mean like it's it, for me and i think for people like us like mm -hmm. creative people and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. it's like who like to build shit it's mm -hmm. like you have to keep trying new things or doing stuff that's hard mm -hmm. or like you know not not just sitting on the one thing that worked and you yeah. know it's like it that otherwise it won't keep you fresh in those other areas you know? yeah yeah if that and makes any sense I yeah, yeah yeah no it does and going back to like my rekindling of the fire of, of wanting to cook like that again and all these things moving forward that i plan on doing are now a bridge to where i w where i think where he's going to lead me to in life mm -hmm. um which being that he gave me this gift of you know my hands and being able to work and cook and and now seeing how people are brought together through the food that that we make it's amazing um so eventually hopefully through all these things through all these opportunities through all these connections through all this networking um hopefully you know god willing my ultimate ideal you know thing when i'm like in my 40s or 50s is uh using my gift of cooking and going to you know parts of the world where people need food the most and help yeah while you know <coughs> showing them different different things and you know introducing my faith if possible but if not just helping feed teaching people. people how to 
how to cook and feed other cook. people and how to yeah that'll be kind of the full like i don't know if this is the right word but i want to try to use it mm. amalgamation what is that Ooh. word what does that word mean <laughs> It sounds like <laughs> like a it collection. Is. It sounds like a city. I think it, it's. The, I think I'm close to the right word, but it would be kind of like the full, like, it would be the climactic point. The culmination. Of, uh, yeah, of the culmination. Together. Yeah, mm-hmm. of, of. Uh, I still want to know what that word. Yeah. Means. But uh, it would be the culmination of like everything that you've done. Like yeah. To, like bringing the, that would be kind of like the 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 climactic point of like you're over here making food you're over here helping people and then if you can just Mm -hmm. go Mm -hmm. around and Mm -hmm. help people in a big way yeah you know and a lot of chefs do that and are really successful with it i think uh god i can't remember his name yes yeah Yeah, that's what i was gonna say he's like kitchen yeah Yeah, he's big on that right oh no way yeah so um they because they 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 reach out to a bunch of like restaurants and stuff like that to like if a specific scenario happens in that area then they'll kind of have them like on the books to help you know things out um but yeah. Um, shit, I was about to say something. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. It was uh, shoot. It'll come back. But um, I know you probably plan on doing it in other places. But like, even just taking some of that, some of that taco money back to Mexico, mm-hmm. pretty cool. Because you know, there's some areas that could probably use help out oh. there, right? And there's oh, a yeah. lot of people making money off of you know food mm-hmm. that originated out there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yep, yep. and then they you know but they don't maybe go back and help mm-hmm. those areas and maybe it's not to say they you know that they sh- that they should feel bad for not going and, yeah. and helping but you know yeah. it's maybe they don't have time or the money to do it but it's you know that would okay. be kind of cool if you went back i remember now yeah okay go for it sorry <laughs> i don't know go for it um uh so as a part of me you know refocus on my faith and restructuring my entire life around that again with my family my loved ones and my friends and you know people around me with how i am with how i do things hopefully when i get to that point um already before all this material things have never been a thing of me Mm -hmm. um if you know something happens and i lose everything right now i'm not afraid at all i'm not scared of it i'm not it doesn't have it doesn't possess me in any way. You didn't um, go out and buy a Ferrari right away, bro? Come <laughs> on, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I don't think you would fit in one. No, nah, I probably <laughs> wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. Um, but uh, with that, you know, with getting to the certain point in life that I want to reach to be able to do things, I want to give all that back, ideally. That's amazing. And And figure out how to be able to do that while at the same time you know obviously you know i have my daughter and you know if i you know be married have children later on in the future make sure that they're good as well and they have their own things going on but um yeah as long as i just i just really just want some land somewhere yeah. remote and just fly in and out of wherever i gotta go cook for people and boom wait you're in the central day. text you're in a hub <laughs> yeah, you know what i mean like yeah that's awesome dude how long have we been going tony hour 22 mm. cool yeah we'll we'll keep it going a little longer and then we can wrap it up but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so um w- you know besides the hot going basically like going to the hospital i guess we've already covered this a little bit mm-hmm. with the first project but like was was there a time when you just wanted to basically just quit you know what i mean like and just or there still is there still sometimes you get maybe not so much anymore but mm-hmm. like just where you're like you know what i could go get a job at wendy's and it would be less stressful than this because yeah. i think about that a lot sometimes i've got all the shit that i have to do mm-hmm. and i'm like dude mm-hmm. it'd be sometimes the days would be easier if i just punched in punched out made my little made my little mm-hmm. bit you know mm-hmm. every time all the time all um, so you go through and that i know lot. every what restaurant owner business owner in general just listening Mm-hmm. they know that and it that i don't think that ever will go away i will say one thing uh before i opened up quantos and i was working other jobs i was wanting to work at just get like one job instead of all those three mm-hmm. that would pay really well so i signed myself up to like google alerts for jobs mm-hmm. um and uh i was about to start working at a hospital kitchen before i opened up quantos but i was like because of benefits and everything. yeah benefits and all that stuff and I was like, oh, if, if i end up doing that then it may take up a lot of my time to be able to get quantos open Mm -hmm. and i may just lose myself into that and never do it that's the danger man yeah i see that happen a lot with people that Mm -hmm. just like they have a passion but they they 
are so addicted to the security, mm-hmm. which I don't blame them because mm-hmm. yeah, I've no. been living without it since I've been like self-employed for different with different projects for since 2016. Yeah. yeah. And there's been some a lot of rough moments where I for like sure. didn't know if that next check was coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I still to this day, I just got one before I came in. I never turned those alerts off to remind me of not that there's nothing wrong with any job at all. doesn't matter the job, but right. to remind me of like, the blessings and opportunities of everything that I have right now. And if, you know, worst case scenario, I I will have to do that, but it just reminds me of like where I was then when I act when I started that into where I am now. That's amazing, yeah. Um and I'll probably keep them <coughs> on for the rest of my life just to, to pop up and remind me again. But just to remind you like uh you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in what we're doing and mm-hmm. like I always find myself kind of like if I ever if I ever complain about stuff like, yeah. <clears throat> you know, something ha- uh, I was working for multiple people that were serving food at ACL last year mm-hmm. and it was hot and I was sick of going to ACL and battling yeah. all the people to get to the the, the vendors, the vendors thing where I had, you know, take you were there yeah. right this year. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And uh, but then I was like, dude, you're 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 taking photos at mm-hmm. one of the most popular music festival you know what i mean it's yeah. like you quit being a bitch you yeah. know what i mean like just just your ha- your job is fun life is easy and good for you and there's like there's rough jobs out there that people mm-hmm. would be happy to work oh yeah you know what i mean and so i kind of in a way i <coughs> rem- have to remind myself in mm-hmm. different ways like mm-hmm. i think i still had the job alerts i still have them on my email too kind of yeah. it's kind of similar thing but mm-hmm. like yeah, just and then you kind of look at jobs and you're like, man, I'm 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 I am blessed to be doing what I'm doing. I'm doing I'm on the my, the right track for me because yeah. none of this sounds like me, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. not like you said, no shade on any job mm-hmm. that that anyone's working, but like you look at stuff and you're like, man, that just I would feel like like caged. I would feel like caged yeah. if I had to go if mm-hmm. I was that mm-hmm. this job or that job. And so it's like yeah. it's, you got to rem- you do have to remind yourself in yeah. some way. Yeah, because we were all there. We were all working that job and thinking like, man, I could be doing this. I should exactly. Be doing this. So and then now and you gotta be grateful so um yeah and acl was the the recent biggest one like what am i doing why am i doing this yeah because this was that was our first year um they had reached out to us asking to to want to be a part of it and um for the longest i was always saying um in my mind i would always say we will never do acl because i know um like j kim owner cilantro and other people um I would see, or they would tell me, like you know, how rough things can get. Yeah. Just the, the months building up to the actual festival, mm-hmm. of getting things organized, getting things ready, ordering, preparation, and all that stuff. It's a big, big, big operation. Mm-hmm. Um, but here is just, I have my team and Jose and everybody, but all that responsibility of the first time, yeah. making sure that because it is our first time and it's something big making sure that it's as smooth as possible and the quality's there absolutely they're not getting the event version Mm -hmm. of quantos Mm -hmm. they're getting the good shit yeah so for like the three four months leading up to it and obviously the last month leading up to it um just finalizing things dealing with personal stuff and uh, the, the biggest thing was the flow of how orders would have come in, mm-hmm. would get made and come back out. Um, because Cause it's an, it's basically zombies. Mm-hmm. It's a zombie horde mm-hmm. of yes. of hungry concert goers that are yeah. uh, dehydrated and starving. Whoever has the fastest like, food, let's yeah, go get it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that was that was one thing that I had to make sure that we were able to lock down. Like I said, being our first time, we had to make a pretty good impression. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you did. Thankfully, uh, the very first day, like we originally started, because they give they give you an option for four registers. And I was like, we're not gonna start with that many. It's gonna be way too much for mm-hmm. the, especially for the first day. So we started off with two, and by the end of the night, we went to three. You guys and got you guys got the flow down immediately. I had been, you know how like doctors, I'd say this all jokingly, uh, Doctor Strange, 
like has like the the time stone and he's like revisiting. I, I'm bad, bro. I'm, oh, okay, I don't okay. know. <laughs> I haven't watched a lot of the old stuff. You'll have oh, to okay. explain it to me. I'm sure somebody gets it. Yeah, yeah. So he has a time stone and he uses the time stone to go back into time and forward into time in different scenarios of how things would play out. Mm, okay. Um, <clears throat> I use that analogy, but uh, in on paper. I was writing out different ways of how to serve the food, how to set up the equipment, how to set up the flow of the line, how to set up the team, how to set up the registers and that stuff. Um, just going on that for like a month in my mind and on paper. And uh, yeah, man, the very first day that design and flow worked insanely. And it worked well? Yeah. So you guys didn't have any like big major hiccups no man. nice no the only time we would have issues which you are dr forever. strange dude <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no it's just life and experience and yeah. working in the restaurant all these years and you know trying to stick to less is more as has been working out so far but less is more is huge mm -hmm. and um yeah man the other crazy thing i don't know if i can i'm sure i'll be fine but uh that week of aco uh, uh a producer reached emailed me and was like hey um venus williams is going to start a this i don't know if I can, this this show mm -hmm. um and no, i don't know who that is uh venus and serena williams the tennis players like the world oh, okay. tennis players um uh, venus one of the sisters um she's gonna be an aco and they're gonna start filming this show and she wants quantum stuff to be a part of it and i was like oh cool i didn't think much of it um just because I was so zoned in into mm -hmm. ACO and like, oh, cool, if it happens, sweet, and that, um, just focus on ACO. And the, the opportunity for that, something like that happening would be ins is insane. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure enough, Friday, doors open at 12. It was, you know, obviously starts off very slow on Friday, yeah. especially. Um, 12 on a dot, the manager was like, hey, um, just reminding you that's gonna, this, you know, she's coming gonna come by. She's coming in 30 minutes and, you know, we're gonna have a production. I was like, all right, cool. And uh, my nerves were just jacked for like trying to like get the first set of customers in for ACO and like trying to see how mm -hmm. the line was gonna plan pan out. I feel like the way you are though, nobody knew, right? <laughs> it's all up here, yeah, right. Yeah. Like you're just cool, Beto, in the <laughs> but like inside, you're just like going, your nerves oh, are going yeah, all crazy. Yeah, I, ha I can have the like you know how they say that thousand yeah. thousand miles, thousand yeah. yards there or whatever. But yeah. Um, yeah, sure enough a crew of like 20 25 people with cameras and you know all these shady things and yeah. stuff like that and and then pulled up first and then her and her her and her immediate team was following right behind i was like damn this is really happening right now sick bro um and yeah man she she's she loved she's, it she's an awesome person we were talking a good 10 15 minutes mixed uh before and after filming mm -hmm. um because she we share the same faith and uh, the other gentleman that she was with with the show also and we were talking about that and just had a really great conversation and That's during the recording of yeah. it was was pretty awesome like they were asking like Dope great questions. questions and um mentioned about you know the taco mafia show and things and you know the history yeah. of quantos and all this stuff and yeah man it was I think it's always dope when like you meet <clears throat> somebody i mean even like something like this right mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like i want to have the guy from quantos and i want to learn more but it's like mm -hmm. I if we can have a cool interview that's cool but it's like if we can like vibe and be mm -hmm. friends after this like yeah. that's that's even cooler you know what yeah, i mean yeah. that's the coolest part about like doing this kind of stuff yeah, is man. just meeting the people like uh usually when usually we sit at this table for we turn the cameras off mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. if, it, if it goes well we sit here and do a whole yeah. nother podcast that never gets recorded yeah, just because sure. there's definitely like a weird energy at this table like a good mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. at this table mm -hmm. like we've cultivated just there's only yeah. been good hangs here yeah nobody's man. ever had an argument at this table no, no, you know no. what I, mean? I don't not yet <laughs> not yet so, yeah, yeah knock on wood mm -hmm. i don't get political so you know mm -hmm. no but uh it's like yeah, there's that it's it's nice when you're like doing something cuz it makes sense to do it for media or mm -hmm. for, you know, whatever for an episode but and then it turns into uh, a dope experience with somebody or a yeah, dope man. conversation. Yeah, yeah. Much so. like this one has, man. Yeah. Like um I think we can wrap it up, bro. Did you yeah. uh you you shared a lot with us. I really appreciate you kind of sharing what you went through with mm -hmm. your surgery and stuff and I think it just kind of is a reminder that like, you know, if if uh if you're going through tough times, if you, you know, whether it's whether you're a religious person mm -hmm. or, 
you know, there's some some dream that's, <clears throat> you know, um, in a lot of people's case, it would have been the restaurant, mm -hmm. something that has mm -hmm. to that they have to stay alive for, whatever you know, yeah. for family, mm -hmm. whatever it is, you'll get you'll get through it if you're a good person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. You, uh, and you just uh, just weather the storm. Yeah. You know, because yeah, you guys man. are doing great. You yeah. didn't you probably didn't close the day when you were in the hospital, huh? No. Shout out to Jose again. Yeah. <laughs> Jose, the, team, yeah. the team, dude. Yeah. That's Speaking awesome. Of, I don't know if I don't know if I mentioned to you, but he he's been playing like metal thrash bands and Oh really? Yeah, like his last one was called Parasitic Violence. Parasitic Violence? Yeah, yeah. I love that name. Yeah, yeah. I love the Tony. <laughs> I love that name. Yeah, they're on Spotify. They have some Parasitic stuff on Spotify. Parasitic violence. And he's trying to get that back going, and he plays the bass for it. Okay. Um, well, I might I might need a band for a show. I did put together some shows around here. I've been known to put together a show or two. I'll let you guys Same. know when I'm, we're playing next, too. Dude, yeah. I'd but he's in come. Austin. Parasitic yeah, yeah. violence. That's yeah. their current band? Mm -hmm. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah. I'll look them up. Yeah, dude, yeah. Yeah, and then I'll introduce you to him whenever you go to Quantos, and I'm sure y'all can talk about Yeah, my, about my mom is uh, going to be in town. Um uh, end of this month and I'm going to take take bring them over to Quantos. Oh, so yeah, I'll hit me, you up. Show me a text so All I right. can be there and like I said, I'll introduce you to Jose and yeah, I'm yeah. sure you'll have a lot of people, mutual friends in common. Oh, for sure, uh, yeah. We can go to, and we're always looking for more people to go crew up, go to mm -hmm. metal shows and mm -hmm. Yeah, hang man. out so yeah. uh thank you again for being on oh, the podcast man. You, man um plug your stuff your restaurants where people oh, yeah. can find you guys yeah so uh cuantos tacos and uh the socials for that is at cuantos tacos 512 and then cuantos hamburguesas 512 uh we mainly announce all of our things on on instagram mm -hmm. and then also obviously uh, i didn't mention it but uh PBS did a docu series on the Taco Mafia. Oh yeah, yeah. Each individually, our history, our story, how we came together, how we helped, um, um, how we helped each other. Is that on YouTube? Restaurant in the community. So now it's on PBS Passport. They, they, they and they'll stream it on um, on live TV on, on TV. Yeah, um, but yeah, you can catch it on PBS Passport. And now, thankfully, it's getting international play. Oh wow! Um, and they're trying to do some other stuff and. Um, put us into some nominations for the show and dude hell yeah, yeah let's see let's see that's awesome that goes. maybe brick and mortar in the future once it's once it's perfect once it's locked down <laughs> yeah yeah i don't uh because they already do have a second season mm -hmm. locked in for the show so okay hopefully hopefully it lines up right at the right that. time right yeah that would be yeah. great well, thank you, Beto. Yeah, I appreciate man, I you, man. Too. And uh, now I'm hungry. <laughs> now, I'm, now we got to go get some tacos. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah, man. Run the outro, Tony. Let's do it. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.